The sixth generation consoles had quite a few rally games, which introduced a lot of people to the motorsport. You had the WRC games, Richard Burns Rally, and of course, Colin McRae Rally 3, 04, and 2005. The Colin McRae Rally games were not brilliant, especially the third game. They were a lot of fun, but they did have issues. The third game did this weird thing where the car would steer from the centre and not from the front wheels. I'm not the only person to have noticed that, as a few people have said the same thing. The two games that were released after did sort that issue out, but that was it. It seemed that Codemasters were taking the EA Sports approach to games by releasing one every year, with not many changes between them. Despite this, all three games were rated highly by critics, as they all got an average of 8 out of 10. For some unknown reason, Codemasters rebranded the series as Colin McRae Dirt and took a few years to develop the next game for PC and the then new 7th generation consoles. Codemasters used a whole new game engine called Neon, which is now known as Ego, and it's been used in all of the Grid and F1 games to this day. The last Dirt game to use it was Dirt Rally 2.0 in 2019. Colin McRae Dirt was released on PC and the Xbox 360 in June 2007, and on the PlayStation 3 in September, a few days before Colin died in a helicopter accident. Because of this, advertising for the game on the PlayStation 3 was dialed back, and an agreement with his family led to his name being removed from future games, starting with Dirt 3. The main part of the game is the career mode, which is all done in tiers. So you have tier 1 which is very easy, and I'm pretty sure it's only there so you can earn a little bit of money to buy the cars that you want. And then as you go through all 11 tiers, you end up having to buy cars that you need, as the difficulty increases quite a bit. There is quite a lot to do in Colin McRae Dirt. You have all of the race disciplines that you would expect in a rally game, such as rally, rallycross and crossover. I don't have an issue with the crossover events at all, but there are a few things to do with Rally and Rallycross which I think could have been improved. With Rally, it's just that there needs to be more stages in each event, and my one issue with Rallycross is that there's no Joker Lap. A Joker Lap is where the driver has to take a slightly longer route for one lap in a Rallycross race. This makes the racing more interesting as the driver chooses when to take the Joker Lap which can drastically change the event standings as not everybody takes it at the same time. This is something that wouldn't be introduced to the series until the 8th generation games. You've also got the Core Pro 4, Core Super Buggy, Class 1 Buggy, Rally Raid T1, Rally Raid T4 and the Hill Climb events. These are only set on North American tracks. With all of these different race disciplines, the game never gets boring. I would start up my Xbox at about 11 at night, thinking I'm only going to play for about 2 hours and then end up turning it off again at 4 in the morning, as every few minutes or so you're doing something different which keeps you glued to the gameplay. I know that quite a lot of people don't like that, but if you have a relatively short attention span, then the way that the career mode is structured is perfect. The events are presented in a pyramid, and so you do 11 events in tier 1, and then one event in tier 11, which is the champion of champions. I think this is the best way to present the events, and it's better than the presentation of the two following games, Dirt 2 and 3. The career mode isn't as long as I would have liked, and I think Codemasters made it quite short so they could sell you DLC events, which is something that they do now, but I don't think they actually did that in the end for this game. Either that, or they might have planned for the Dirt series to have a yearly release cycle, just like the Colin McRae Rally games, which also didn't happen. And to be honest, I'm glad it didn't happen, as the quality of each game would have suffered. The physics are perfect, they're not too sim-like, but at the same time they're not arcade either. I wouldn't call them simcade physics though. The game is more realistic than its predecessors, and that's not just because the game is running on newer hardware. It's because of the then-new Neon game engine, 
but that game engine is not perfect at all. Not only did I notice the frame rate dropping to below 30 frames per second quite a few times, there was also a lot of screen tearing. It only really happens in the Rally Raid T4 events and that might be the reason why they don't return for Dirt 2. I can't really be too negative about the Neon slash Ego game engine as this was the first game that used it and the screen tearing doesn't affect the rest of the game. But at the same time Codemasters did spend between two and three years developing the game and so they should have had all of the optimization issues sorted out. I don't think the graphics are as good as they could have been either, as if you look at other racing games that came out in 2007, such as Forza Motorsport 2 and Project Gotham Racing 4, you can see that they look a lot better. But then again, those games were published and bankrolled by Microsoft Studios. One of the reasons for the poor graphics is that there was a trend at the time of this game's release where developers would use a yellow filter also known as the filter in their games. And it was used so much in the early Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 games that they are now known as the filter generation. And just like a lot of games from this era, it makes the environments look terrible. Dirt has 35 tracks and stages from eight countries all over the world. You have Australia, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Spain, the United Kingdom, and the United States. I like this track selection, and the tracks look more open than they did in the previous five games from the fifth and sixth generation. And on some tracks, that does give the game an open world look and feel, especially on the desert tracks. But I think the lack of visible barriers has a lot to do with that. I do like the variation of the tracks and there are quite a lot of them, but it's missing some of the more iconic rally locations, such as Finland and Sweden. And because of that, there's no snow. That might be a good thing as they are way too bright. It looks like there's way too much saturation. The reason for this is that there was another trend to do with graphics which lasted for about 15 years called Bloom. Bloom was used every now and then in video games but became really popular in the 7th generation, just like the filter. It was used to make light sources around 70 to 80 times brighter, but it made the darker areas of the game a lot darker, which was the opposite intended effect. It's not used now as we have better ways of lighting an area in games such as ray tracing. At times, it does make it hard to see and it is quite irritating. I think at one point it also gave me a headache. It is that bad. Moral of the story is, don't play this game for too long without taking a break. I learnt that lesson the hard way. Overall, I like the track selection, even if there are a few notable locations missing. I pretty much feel the same way about the car list as well. There are a lot more different classes of vehicles in this game than there were in the previous ones. You have all kinds of rally cars, buggies, and a few interesting vehicles that never returned to the series, such as the new Stratos, hill climb big rigs, and the Rally Raid T4 trucks. The game is missing a lot of the Group A and Group B cars, such as the MG Metro 6R4, Ford RS200, and the Ford Escort RS Cosworth. There are so little Group A and Group B cars that the game groups them together as classic. A rally game without the cars that I've just listed doesn't seem right. Codemasters did drip feed them back into the series over time, but they should have been in the first Dirt game from the start. The car assets do look good though, and I would say that they are on par with the car assets in Forza Motorsport 2. Overall, I do like Colin McRae Dirt, but there are a lot of issues. The graphics aren't as good as they could have been. I think if they removed the filter and bloom effect, then it would have looked a lot better. I do like the car list and track list, even though there are a few notable cars and locations missing, 
but the progression and the gameplay along with the cars and locations that never returned to the series makes it a game worth playing and I do highly recommend it. This has been my review of Colin McRae Dirt on the Xbox 360. I know that this review is a little bit shorter than usual but I think if I made it any longer then you'll just be listening to the ramblings of a madman. If you like this review then give it a like, if you didn't then that's your problem and if you want to see more then please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and goodbye.